Hello, I'm Philip Cameron. Welcome to our program today. I'm joined with my daughter Melody here, and we have got a great show for you today. I'm going to ask you a question about who you know Jesus to be, and how you understand him, and how you conceive him in your mind limits him or allows him to expand into more areas of your life. I am so glad you joined us. This is Daily Faith. I'm fascinated by the conditioning of the mind and how much that controls all of what we do. I often say this to our kids and, and, and our staff. Truth is no longer truth. Perception is what is the new truth. People don't pay attention to what the truth is anymore. If you look at the newspapers, con they, they talk about a perception of truth or their, or their idea of truth or their version of truth. But that rarely is actually the truth. They, they say that in war, um, truth is the, the, is the first casualty. And I, I've been, I'm really fascinated how much our conditioning, I'm Scottish, so I come from a country that has a certain mindset. And uh, so I, I, I heard one of the great comedians of Scotland one time saying that the greatest music that Scotland has ever made and when they play the bagpipes, there's all these songs of defeats that we've suffered over, uh, over our history. And we have these incredible emotional songs because England beat us again. And uh, our conditioning and your conditioning is limited by, by uh, limits what we see and how we understand Jesus. I was in a, a, an island called the Faroe Islands, which is between um, Scotland and Iceland. And uh, this is a tiny group of islands, a protector of Denmark. When the Vikings came to America, long before Christopher, Christopher Columbus, they dropped off their sick in these islands called the Faroe Islands. And um, they're an amazing people. In fact, when I was there, um, they, 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 they killed a whale. And they killed the, when, when you kill one whale, the whole pod comes. And we went to church one night, and there was no one there. Not a soul showed up. And I said, what? What did I preach? What did I say last night that offended everyone? And someone came and says, oh, no, no, there's whales down the harbor. And we went down to the harbor, and, and this whole pod of whales was there. And, and the, the person who found the first whale, it was like worth $75,000 in monetary value to them. And every widow in the, in, in the island got food. It was, a, it was a tremendous thing to watch. And it's not my culture, but it's their culture. And for me to go up there and criticize them for doing what they've done for centuries is... is is rude, to be quite frank with you. And I, I met a man there, a lovely man, and we, we had supper in his house, and we talked to us about Jesus, and we talked about him, and, and he was a Christian. And as we're leaving, I said, let's take a picture together. And uh, he, he, his face turned dark, just closed down. I says, do you have a problem? No photograph, no photograph. And I says, what do you mean, no photograph? He says, uh, graven image. You shall not have a graven image. And he would not permit himself to have a photograph because it was a graven image. Isn't that crazy? Wow. And I grew up in a Pentecostal church in Scotland. And the pastor of the church would begin, he, he, he could begin with Noah in the flood, but he would always end up on woman wearing makeup. Or, or woman having earrings on, or woman having sleeveless dresses in their in their dress. Trousers. And, oh pa my! God. Did you say trousers? Did you say? Pa <laughs> oh my lord! And and literally, I'm I'm serious. Every Sunday of our lives, we got a lecture on how we ought to live. The Holy Ghost fell on the Camerons and set us free. I remember going home from school one day, and um, I came in and my mom was at the. The, the stove, the cooker, we call it in Scotland. In the house we lived in those days, you came down four stairs, and there was a glass door, and, and, and you opened the glass door into the kitchen. And I opened the door, and my mom, who had always worn a French roll, and always wore gray and dark uh, brown or black, long, I mean, just dowdy clothes, because that was what our concept of serving God was. 
And my mom had a flowery white, white with green and leaves and yellow flowers. This dress, a, I remember it was like a big, I don't know what you call them. Anyway. <laughs> She's no help at all. She's sitting there laughing at me. And our, she had short oh, sleeves sir. on this dress, and she'd had her hair cut, and it was all wavy and curly. And I opened the door, and I went, oh, Mom, what have you done? Mm -hmm. Because my concept of God had been beat into me that God was an angry God, that you had to do everything the way unless you, you know. Now, the guys, the men could wear all the fancier suits and the bright color ties. That was great. But the woman had to act as if they were going to a funeral every day. And I want to tell you something, that your world is bigger than you think. Your God is bigger than you think. And he can only deal with you to the realm and measure that he can communicate with you. So the disciples come back, and, and Jesus said, Whom do men say that I am? This is in Matthew 16, 13. And, and Jesus, when Jesus was coming into the district of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked the disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he says, But who say you that I am? Who do you think I am? And Peter, the the hot-headed, terror of trouble, the guy that cuts people's ears off and, and cusses and swears, had a revelation. And he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I want to ask you, I'm going to pray for all of us, me as well. We need to get a bigger understanding of who God is. That God's bigger than the crisis you're in. That God is bigger than the lack you have. That God is bigger than the sickness in your body. That God is bigger than the trouble in your family. And he's waiting for you and I to understand and grasp the truth. That he is great and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. But the disciples came back and regurgitated what other people said he was. And I want to tell you something. I need to have a vision of Jesus for myself. I want to see him through my own vision of him. Not what someone else tries to impose upon me. But I want to know him in the power of his resurrection in my family, in my life. And I want to pray for you today. That something changes in your life. That you can move out of the restraints of your conditioning. What is it? It's amazing. Some folk get so bent out of shape about, like, the, the Pentecostal I was, the church I was part of was makeup. But what, what's the thing that gets you upset? What, what things can the, can the devil use to stir your heart into doubt and fears? Let me tell you something. God is great. He's bigger than what you know and I know. And he wants you and I to move into a bigger and greater understanding that he is bigger than all of us. The psalmist David, up to the point that David was in the Bible, they thought that God was restricted into the, the land of Israel. And it was David that had the revelation. He said, the heavens declare your handiwork. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Because I, in the Bible, all of the revelation or all the understanding that these people have, remember when Ruth left Moab to go back to Israel with her mother-in-law, Naomi. She says, because I'm leaving Moab and I'm going into Israel, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. She thought that she was leaving the gods of Moab behind and because she was moving over the border into Israel, that she was now talking to the God of Israel. And, and that's, that's exactly the same mentality that limits us from doing something for the kingdom of God. You have tremendous power in your hands and your prayers. You can change people's lives by the power of God. When your family is unsaved, and you may be in a situation just now, and, and the devil's saying it's always going to be like this, it's always going to be darkness, it's always going to be strife and war in your family, that's a lie of the devil. And God wants to break you out of that thought processes, that, that limitations in your mind, to let you know that the possibility is there, that every single member of your family can be in heaven with you. You are 
an heir to the promise of God. And the promise of God is that God is willing that none should perish. When Jesus died, he died on the cross for everybody. And that includes your family. So I want you to pray with me today. And I'm going to say, Lord, open our eyes of understanding. Help us understand that you are bigger than our circumstance and that you are working everything according to the purpose of your will. And I'm going to move in your flow and not be stuck and hung up on someone else's imposition in my life. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. I ask that the Holy Ghost stir your spirit to see the possibility of the miraculous happening in your life. God is not done with you. You're not yesterday's news. You're tomorrow's promise. The failures of your past, you can go back and fix them. But you can put them under the blood of Jesus. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that when we are asked, who say you that I am? We have a revelation of the bigness and greatness of God that he is bigger than our circumstance. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Don't let someone put you in a box. God's got a bigger plan than that. Watch this. We'll be back in a moment. Full house. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons, and in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail, post office box 24 Two two four six Montgomery, Alabama, three six one two four. What this book is about is exactly what I've just spoken to you about. We are so fatalistic about, oh well, my son's not saved. That is that is the wrong thought process in your life. The closer my dad got to salvation. He beat my mom, he would take her to the bar, and if she wouldn't drink, he would beat her there. I mean, it was, it was horrendous. And the closer he got to being saved, the worse he got. And if my mother had only known that he was getting closer to being saved, she thought it was just getting worse and worse, because that was her mindset, that was her understanding. And what this book does, it changes how you see the problem of your family. Your family is an answer waiting to happen. Your son is a miracle waiting to happen. Your marriage is a miracle on its way. And instead of looking at the negative aspect of things and saying, well, we might as well quit and give up. This is not the time to give up. This is the time to move forward. And this book will help you Look at the devil and say, hold on a second. I am not taking your lies anymore. I don't accept what you're saying about my family. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And I want to partner with you in this miracle. You can write me. One of the things I love to do is to read the names of your unsaved loved ones. Tell me what's going on. Write me. Something happens. Something happens in faith when you do something about your circumstance. You can sit there and be worried about your family all day and nothing changes. But if you have enough faith to go and get a piece of paper and a pen and write down, say, Philip, my sons, and just tell me the story, I promise you I will read it. You can send that to me to P at P.O. Box 242-246, 242-246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. I will read it and I'll put it in, we in our office in Montgomery of a prayer place that we put our prayer requests in. It's an altar. It's an ark. It's a little boat that my wife's uncle made in Scotland. And we put the names of the loved ones into the ark as an act of faith that they're into the ark of safety. 
You can change the destiny of your whole family by doing that right now. So call us right now and be a part of a miracle in your family. I want you to watch this video about a lovely young girl called Louise, Louisa, and uh, you'll be blessed by this. Watch this. Меня зовут Луиза. Моя мама родила меня очень рано, в 17 лет. Я своего отца не знала никогда. И когда я родилась, моя мама была разочарована, что я родилась, и она отказалась от меня. И спустя некоторое время она вернулась в мою жизнь. Ну, я ее совсем не знала. Для меня мой отец и моя мать была мой дедушка. И когда он умер, мама забрала меня с себе. Спустя некоторое время у нее появился новый муж, ну, а точнее сожитель, и появился мой брат, Коля. Я уже на тот время понимала, что я маме не нужна. Ну, она больше любила брата, и все. Спустя время у мамы появился новый мужчина, и родился мой второй брат, Андрюша. Мама начала плохой образ жизни, она могла уехать на несколько недель и бросить меня с детьми. И, и один раз, когда я не ходила в школу, я уже пошла в первый класс, и не ходила в школу, моя учительница заинтересовалась, почему ребенок не ходит в школу. И один раз она пришла к нам домой, она была шокирована, как мы живем. Она пошла и рассказала в службу, как мы живем, наша семья. И нас лишили, мы, нашу маму лишили родительских прав. Я попала с моим братом Колей в приют. И напоследок, когда я попала в приют, мама мне сказала, ты не моя дочь. Для меня эти слова до сих пор ну, больно. Больно я воспринимаю эти. Да. Но я знаю, что меня Бог любит. Я попала в приют. Я была очень... Злая на то, что на эту жизнь, я думала, зачем жить, зачем мне так, такая жизнь. Но меня сдерживало то, что у меня есть брат, мой брат Коля. Через некоторое время моя мама вернулась в приют к нам, пришла, но у меня не было, когда болела. Это был последний раз, когда она приходила. Когда я вернулась из больницы, нам предложили поехать в другой приют. Я думаю, хуже не будет. И было лучше намного. Я попала в верующий, в христианский приют. Там дети были радостны. Веселились. Я думаю, что вы веселитесь? У вас родителей нет, а вы веселитесь. Ну, я привыкла к ним. Это был мой дом. Они ко мне относились хорошо, не так, как... До этого моя мама относилась ко мне, и я увидела настоящую любовь, то, что меня могут кто-то любить. Я благодарю Бога за все, за все, что Он делает в моей, в моей жизни. Я благодарю, что есть такие люди, которые меня поддерживают, мне помогают. Благодарю Бога. Wow. Imagine living in a world when your mom doesn't want you, no one wants you. That an orphanage is better than your home. And that lovely girl is in our house in Ukraine. And she's speaking Ukrainian. Her life would not be possible if it wasn't for folks like you that made it possible. We have a house. In fact, we've just taken a crazy step of faith and we found a house that was double the size of the one we had before. Right in the middle of building Vatra and paying for Vatra Village, this opportunity came up and I said, well, Lord, you're going to have to help me anyway, so I might as well, I might as well be in real trouble. And we have a home there that's now twice the size. And Louisa is one of the girls who is being transformed by grace. You can help us 
in many ways. You can help us finish. We have two houses that are unfinished. It takes $45,000 per house to finish them. Each house will house 15 kids. Then, then the, the monthly support is the greatest need that we have. And that is when people give a dollar a day. All, of we do, all what we do is done by the support, the monthly support of people giving a dollar a day. Because someone gave a dollar a day, Louisa was able to come to our house. Each of our new houses in Vatra Village is going to take 120 people giving one dollar a day to make it possible. And I'm asking you if you could pray, if you could be one of those 120 people. A dollar a day is less than a can of Coke. You can't buy much for a dollar a day. But I'll tell you what you can do. You can change a young girl's life and a young boy's life for eternity's sake. We have six houses that need 120 people each to sponsor them. If there's enough people watching this program that, whose heart has been touched by Louisa's story, that you could say, well, I'll be one of those. I can, I can give a dollar a day. You can call the number on the screen, 833-DAILY-FAITH, or it's 833-324-5932. That's the number. And you can call that number and say, listen, I want to sponsor one of the houses at Vatra Village. I want to make possible for these kids to come. They leave the orphanage at 16. They put on the street because they don't, the government doesn't care. They're actually called orphanage graduates. Isn't that crazy? And they're put on the street and traffickers come and offer them bogus jobs and they end up being trafficked and used 30 to 50 times a day. If it were your daughter or your granddaughter, wouldn't you want someone like me sitting here asking folk to help? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you want someone to reach out and say, please, let me help you out of the mud and mire that you're in and put you back in school and train you and dress you and make you proud to live and then share the gospel. That young girl, as we speak, we're having our outreaches in Moldova and the Ukraine. And as I'm talking to you, Louisa is out there right now sharing the gospel with other people the hope that she found through orphans' hands. You have tremendous power in your hands right now. That number on your screen is your contact to us. That you can say, Philip, go, go get more. Find another Louisa. Go and find another Ulizana. Find another Mariana. Find more of these kids and take them in under the shelter of the gospel and have their lives transformed and then send them out into the fields that are white at the harvest. And the laborers are still few. And you have the power to make that happen. You can do something magnificent right now for the gospel's sake. I pray in the name of Jesus you can help us. Melody, I know there are folk watching that might want to be able to help us finish the two houses that still need finishing. We bought the houses unfinished, and it's costing $45,000 each house to finish them. And maybe you're a business person right now, and you can say, Philip, I would love to do nothing more than finish, get, get that house done. You can help do that right now by contacting us. And that number, or you can write us at P.O. Box 242-246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. Yeah, we have it set up so that um, you can go to walmarttarget.com um, and purchase items. You can choose them yourself. You can, you know. Yeah, we have a, explain that. We have We're furnishing our houses right now, and we have registries set up in Walmart and Kmart. So if you go onto our website, philipdcameron.org. Walmart and Target. And, and you, can, you can click on, it takes you right to that site, and all the furnishings and draperies and all the stuff necessary, towels and sheets and pillows for the new houses at Vatra, you can go on there, you can buy one item, just for a few dollars, but it, it, it's another item. We're getting closer all the time. You might have enough money to sponsor a whole house. You might have enough money to sponsor a room in the house. But you can change a life. The whole point of this is changing a life. Yeah, I, I see these, you know, and what you're, the story you were telling about our family, 
um, they came to know Christ, and everybody was telling them, well, this is what Jesus, this is, this is what it should be, and this is who Jesus is, and this is what, and Peter himself, there were so many things of, of you know, ideas of what, who Jesus was, and these houses, it's where we, all we do is point them to Christ. These kids that come in don't know who Jesus is, no. and we, all we do is point them to Christ, and they're finding for themselves who Jesus is. Yeah. They know for themselves who he is, and then they're going out, and they're ministering to others, pointing them to Christ, and it just, it continues on, and it all happens because of these homes. You can make a miracle happen today. Yeah, you can. Contact us. Reach out to us today. It's, uh, area, it's 833-329-5932. You are so important. We love you. God bless you. See you soon. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphans hands if you want to join philip and chrissy in taking care of these precious young people please contact us today by calling 833 daily faith you can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to post office box 242246 montgomery alabama 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.